with Kindness in Action for four years now. This team this year, uh, which was composed of uh, three experienced dentists, three residents, and four students, and an assistant, and yourself truly, um, started out really well. I think that the, the group spirit or the team spirit was really there since the beginning. Very, very quickly, people understood what it took to make things happen, and we did. Rápido de medio campo hacia adelante, y la idea era confrontarse, hacer un tandem, ¿no? Es decir, en cualquier situación. Ahora tenemos como 16,000 habitantes. There's about 16,000 inhabitants in together in this area. Se caiga se el hospital. They keep the hospital on one level, so when they grow, they grow flat because this is a seismic region, like an earthquake, and they are afraid that uh, they would fall down. So they want the last thing to fall apart is the hospital. Pero cada compañero. Mi país dos. Bienvenidos, ¿no? Bienvenidos. Clark Kent, Clark Kent. Superman. I chose to do this mission because I'd already been on one previous, and it was a life-changing experience. When I decided to join the second mission. It was because I knew that my little bit that I could help would make a difference for others. And that's why I do it. Y van a llegar a Oyacachi. Este es un pueblo indígena, totalmente indígena de la sierra, ¿no? Oh, okay. It's a. Uh, it's actually. This is exactly what we want to do. So, okay. <laughs> this is a completely indigenous uh, population. Es el pueblo más pobre que tenemos en todo el área. It's the population the most poor that they have in this whole area. Entonces hemos elegido que este sea el primero que ustedes visiten. So they have decided that that would be the one that would be most appropriate for us to visit. Bueno, muchas gracias. I don't think I will do anything else. You know, I will still be a dentist, but I will, uh, if I want to do it differently a little bit, I'll uh, get my uh, dental gear on a sailboat and go sailing around the world and do that full time instead of putting it part time. That's what I would do. I will still be a dentist, though. <laughs> so we, they will leave us there for three days, and then they will come back and see if we're still in one piece. They said. <laughs> Uh, it's a two-hour drive out of uh, Maiza, Maiza, where we stayed last night. Uh, we're in the ambulance today, so we have the fast ambulance, and uh, it's a pretty exciting ride. Un favor de se encuentra por aquí Juan Chin, tenga la bondad. It is a horse alone. Oyakachi was a small village of indigenous people 
Uh, they live in a village about 3,000 meters up in the Andes. Um, as we approached it, it almost looked like a real town. But uh, as we got closer and started walking through, the, the houses were not finished or broken down or made out of various materials. I've been lots of native Indian villages, especially in Guatemala, because in, mostly in Guatemala they were persecuted. So they ran out in the, in the mountains. They're isolated and they don't want to know anything about the white people. Oyakachi was my first time on a reserve, and I know we have reserves in Canada as well, but to see people living in a, uh, you're in a valley surrounded by mountains from all sides, you just feel there's nothing else in the world. If you, if you live there, I'm sure that's how they feel. Very nice. It's like a loft. Yeah, we're gonna doze in. It's beautiful. It's, it's like a chalet. It's, it's like a mini chalet. Fireplace chalet. Cool. And what? Three story high. What do you guys see? Buenos dias. Hey, Papi. Gotta be done. <laughs> we had a great team here. There are lots of there were lots of people in my class who wanted to come. And it's also hard because you don't know who's gonna exactly mesh well, you don't know who's gonna be okay with the environment. Not everyone, you know, in our North American standards, not everyone is okay with camping or being cold at night or not having water or you know, and you, you, you want to have a, a good working group, but I thought that the people I worked with were great. Um, everybody has a huge heart. Like, everyone just wanted to help. The first thing I want you to remember is do no harm, okay? One, we're not in ideal conditions. We're not in ideal uh, settings, and we're working very close to each other. You've seen how we set up those three beds, Man. <laughs> okay, that's another thing. Breathe, breathe, take breathe. your time and breathe. Okay? Our job here is what I call it is emergency dentistry. Any infection, we take care of. Anything elective, we don't have to do it. If you see kids coming to you and the kids screaming, we have not the means to restrain them to do the work. So, meaning do no harm, we still don't want to tra traumatize them either. So, take your hand, take your bye-bye, we don't, we cannot treat everybody, okay? They're gonna be a certain triage protocol a little bit, but the triage is not perfect, okay? So every dentist, uh, you have re-evaluate whatever you see. If you guys are working and you need an instrument which you don't have, instead of running all around, you just say, Isabel, very loud, and say the number of what you need and I'll bring it to you, okay? Kindness in Action is um, an opportunity for me uh, to be part of a humanitarian mission. It actually gives me the opportunity to do something nice. Any of you break rules of sterility, you're going to get major shit from Isabel. And she's right. She is right. Okay? Because sometimes we because are Because we're here approach. does not mean that we do not respect what we're supposed to do. Okay? Atención, se comunica a los pobladores de Oyacachi que actualmente se encuentran brigadas odontológicas gratuitas en el puesto de salud por lo que pueden acudir para curarse los dientes 
atención se comunica a los pobladores de Oyacachi que actualmente se encuentran brigadas odontológicas gratuitas en el puesto de salud por lo que pueden acudir para curarse los dientes. The people were a little bit uh, scared of us, I think, or maybe just not confident that these groups of people here were coming to treat them and help them. We had to do a, a lot of work to convince them that we were there for their own good and for their care and that our approach, although a little bit strange to them, uh, was something that in the end was going to be worthwhile. Put the, the key on the side of this one. This one's finished. Yeah, okay. okay. And this one, there's and that no one, funny. They're okay. all gone. So basically what we would do is, we usually, sometimes we were paired with each other, sometimes Abre we... La boca. Yeah, sometimes we'd be paired with uh, one of the professors and we just go through as fast as we can, look in the mouth, see what's wrong, what's going to, you know, flare up in six months. Right, you have to prioritize on the spot, right. you can't, okay. you're not going to see this kid again. You have to really know what needs to be done. Um, six is coming up. Six. Uh, two, six. Yeah. So, you know, I have to face it. Going to a dentist is already stressful enough. So imagine going to a dentist, you know, they don't, most of the dentists don't even speak your language. It's very hard. You don't know what's happening. And some of the kids are going to be the first time seeing a dentist. Just the fact of me uh, having fun, uh, laughing, just like, you know, break the ice a little bit. What's your name? Yeah. What's my name? Oh. Gerardo. <laughs> English speaking, cool. And braces. It would be nice to make them feel at ease. I, it is very difficult when you don't speak Spanish or when you have only a very small basis. Um, of Spanish, it's, it's hard, for, especially for the kids. For the adults, it's not so bad. You can actually, you know, you don't need to entertain them as much. Um, so it would be better to, uh, to, to speak a little bit more Spanish, and that's what I'm going to try for the next year. Tienes dolor? Si. Aquí. Donde? I find sometimes the kids were easier to treat because they're just like, kids are kind of like learning machines. They're like little sponges. It's not what you say, it's how you say it. And sometimes just like facial expressions or the way we use our hands when we speak, that the kids were a little bit more amenable to those kind of things. Sí, sí, duele? No duele. No duele? Me es no, no es bueno. I didn't realize how much Italian I knew before I started whipping at all these <laughs> Italian words, realizing it's not Spanish. This is Marisol, and she has a filling to do. So I'm going to take a look and try to do filling. Since we're more privileged uh, than some other people in the world, uh, I just find that it's such a good gesture um, to use our knowledge and to use some of our uh, equipment and you know facilities um, to, to help others. De nada. really, really afraid to have her tooth taken out. She was in a lot of pain. We, we decided to go outside and try to calm her down, but she was scared and then one kid hears one thing, the next year kid hears them screaming and crying and they don't understand and then everyone gets scared and it's just, it's not good for anybody. And then I was really been proud of myself and proud of her that we were able to get her in there, have the tooth taken out, 
and that she was okay. You know, she was crying before and I was trying to dry her tears and then I was crying afterwards and she was drying my tears and you know, she was like, okay, why are you crying? And I was, I tried to tell her in my broken Spanish that I was hap I was really happy that she wasn't gonna have pain afterwards. Slowly the patients um, got confident and saw that we cared and we did things with details and that we were careful with them and tried not to hurt them and and we had patients come back. Now near the end when the, the relationship of trust was established people started coming in but by then it was time for us to leave. So perhaps if we, we had the opportunity to go back it would make a bigger impact on that population. Um tom pra cantar, um tom pra falar, um tom pra viver. Um tom para a cor, um tom para o som, um tom para o ser. Ah, como é bom dormir. Ah, como é bom despertar. Quiero cantar, sí señor, a mi lindo Ecuador. Con amor siempre debes decir, por donde quiera que tú estés, ecuatoriano soy. Y mañana, y mañana recordarás todo ese inmenso cielo azul que un día tu hijo... El Chaco, um, about 8,000 people live in that uh, canton classic poor town in a poor province. El Chaco was actually the best part, um, just because they really seemed to appreciate us. Where we were actually working was a, uh, a beautiful place. We were all, all together working. Uh, that was, I really enjoyed it. Chaco was uh, hard work, uh, having all the dentists in the same room, so a lot of running around, uh, no breaks, <laughs> working from early morning until uh, 4 or 5 o'clock, and uh, time was passing so fast. El Chaco was a lot of fun, it was great to see the whole team interacting together and kind of helping each other out. And uh, yeah, it was just, it was just very good, uh, it's very good vibes. Oh, yeah. bien! Let's smack fluoride in this guy. Okay. Okay? Smack fluoride. That's the worst, uh, from all my experience, that's the worst dental hygiene and all the rampant decay I've seen like for, for a long time. It's unbelievable. They were like really uh, poor, uh, barely affording things. The fact that we did like nice work, lots of like needy work here, and the fact that we're all at the same time having fun, it gives you like, like in good friends, a fish okay? It's it's nice feeling that to have. En la maleta, ¿qué se dice? Gracias. Gracias. Se dice gracias. It was really fun having to see the kids come from their schools and they were really excited to see us and just interacting with them and you know showing them how to brush their teeth and just talking to them and playing with them and that part I think it was it was really that was very 
touching and you know I think that was the best part for me working with the kids and just seeing them happy and laughing. Okay. Come sit here. So do you need a lot? The dentist in El Cacho, uh, one of the first things she asked me was how old I was, and I said I was 28. And she said, well, that's strange because you have such a new face. Um, so apparently uh, I'm known as new face. <laughs> I mean, they warned me that it was going to be uh, emotionally challenging and um, difficult at times, and I, I didn't really believe them, and it, and it, it kind of came true. Like I, I was surprised at how overcome I was um, in a lot of uh, situations. Uh, the children with uh, Down syndrome and other developmental syndromes that had been abandoned by their parents. Um, I mean, just amazing, amazing, you know, fall into your arms and uh, hold on to you type children. It's, it's very, very different than what you do back home. Aprendimos a querer I started Canis in Action 13 years ago. Since then I'm hooked, okay? It's been like 13 years. We did Honduras uh, four years, I think, three years, 14. Uh, Guatemala four years. Uh, Nicaragua, we did three years in a row. We did Peru two years. And uh, now Ecuador. I met my wife through Canis in Action, so, you know. It is difficult. Um, it is difficult to see people living in such poor conditions. It is difficult to see how other populations treat their children, sometimes not exactly the way we would do it. Um, but all in all, when we do these things, you really feel like you've just added that little extra drop in the big bucket of kindness. I feel like it's almost that everybody needs to be able to give back somehow, uh, however they can. It's just, I don't understand how the world is going to keep on going around if we don't all help each other out somehow and um, whether it's by volunteering and coming down to a random place in Ecuador to help out people who you don't know and you're never gonna see again, or whether it's teaching or whether it's giving money, you know, whatever you can do to help out, you know, it's just gonna help the profession, it's gonna help the people, it's gonna help the world, and that's what we need to do. <laughs>